Hi, it's Fraser Christian here from the Coastal Survival School. I've just come down out onto the rocks today to try and show you where I'm going to set the nets. Chosen a really nice area out here. You see there's big boulders and rocks all the way around it. You can see the cormorants are sat out on there at the moment. And this has created a lovely lot small lagoon in here. And out beyond the lagoon, I don't know if you can just see, sea level is actually about a metre lower than it is in this pool, so it's trapping. It's actually a natural sort of fish trap, and I imagine maybe wait till the tide goes right out. If the water was clear, it's actually coloured today because it's a little bit turbulent in the sea out there, which is really good for the purpose of us putting the net out. It means hopefully the fish aren't going to be able to see the net because the water was coloured. But if the water was clear, once it went out, I'm sure if we waded around this pool with our spear or with our throw nets, there'd definitely be some fish trapped in this pool. It's a great location. What we need to look at, we need to look at the weather conditions as well today. We've got some big clouds there gathering up in the sky. Um, there's been a little bit of rain this morning. The wind's actually coming offshore, blowing that way, sort of due northwest. It's fairly fresh today. The sun's come out. It's quite a nice day. Uh, it's about an hour till low tide, and it's a spring tide at the moment. It's just off of a new moon. And round here, the spring tides are always on the new moon and the full moon. And I think that's pretty generic for the whole sort of planet, to tell you the truth. That's the most influence of gravity. And that's when the tide comes in a long way and goes out a long way and that's going to expose plenty of grain that we can get out on it means we can get and set the nets without getting too wet the water's not going to be over our head and when we set the nets the nets are just out in front of there um, i don't even see that pile of stones just down there with the orange rock on top of it that's where the first anchor is and it runs out on this clean piece of grain we just changed a clean piece of grain between the large boulders we just run the nets straight out straight out towards the sea we want the least amount of resistance over the net as the tide comes in. So the tide comes in from over there from the west, or the southwest. We don't want to run the net parallel to the coastline. The sea generally is going to come in this way, or it's going to come in from that way or that way, and go out over that way or that way. We want the least amount of resistance over the net. If we've got the net running parallel to the beach, it's going to have loads of surf, you know, so there's a lot of surface area on that net. It's going to be covered, covered with tension and could just possibly bag together and just get drawn up onto the beach. So it's about an hour now to low tide. I'm just going to get the drop net, which is on my back there. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm going to go out, find some bait, smash up some limpets, try and find some crabs, put them in the drop net and try and catch some prawns while I'm waiting for the tide to go out. There's something else I want to show you. Then you can just see here. Something I got done yesterday, just after I put the net out. Find this lovely flat stone. I've made some prawn traps out of some plastic bottles and they're just hidden underneath there, I don't know if you can see them, so what we've done is like prawns love something, they generally hide underneath a shelf, so we've put the prawn traps and we've just sort of made it a bit more natural by putting a big flat stone there and you can probably see, just over the top made like a little altar stone if we put the plastic bottles underneath, so just in case of lifting these off, it's a two-handed job, so I'll just switch the camera off in a second and I'll come back to you when I've got this big stone off. So there we are. So here's the plastic bottles. There's something definitely in that one, look, and something in there. And all I've done, I'll show you how to make these, as simply as the plastic bottle, and I'll just pick one up now. Make sure you pick them up. I've got one laying that way, one laying that way, and the other one both laying the same way. And just pick them up. There's a few holes, I've punched a few holes in the bottom of the bottle, and that's literally just the lid of the bottle, or the end of the cap of the bottle cut off and pushed back inside itself, which you can probably see there. And then obviously we just have to turn them upside down now and just let the water drain out, and we'll find out what's in there in a second. There you go. There's some prawns in there, look. You can probably see them flicking around, lovely. And that was just a little bit of a... Uh, the footage didn't come out yesterday of the bringing the net in properly, so I'm going to film that bit again today, but... There was a couple of mullet in the net yesterday, and I just wedged a little piece of the mullet's liver in the bottle there, just between the neck of the bottle and the... I'll just show you, that's just simply push, pushed inside. I'll show you that, it's just simply pushed inside backwards like that. And the, the bait was wedged here between, between this part of the bottle and there, and that keeps it by the entrance. It's really important to have the bait by the entrance, otherwise the... Whatever you're trying to catch is not going to be encouraged to go where you want them to. Just be careful at this point, you don't tip the prawns out. There you go, there's a, there's a couple of prawns there. Make sure you don't 
popping back in the bottle. There's two in that one. I'm not going to exactly make me a monumental meal, but those two are live on the hook now, just on a float over the back of that pool somewhere. There's any bass just in amongst this pool, they're going to go for them straight away. Nice live flicking pool, prawn. They give those a wash out. And just put the bottle over there. And some safe high ground. Let's just check the other two, see if there's anything in there. Right, let's check the other two. There's definitely something in there flapping around. Feels a bit big, I don't know what that is, possibly a small fish. So we just put that to drain out. Just turn that upside down to drain that out. Obviously don't drain them out over the pool in case you work. But it comes flying out. Now we've got a small fish in there. So we've got some excellent live bait anyway. I might get the pocket fishing kit out of my bug out bag in a minute and put some bait on. Throw a float out with some bait on here. So then now what have we got? That was on the smashed crab I put in there. Let's check the third one then. We definitely say we don't always have to look at it as like a food source, but we've definitely got some live bait and live bait is possibly the best thing that we can lose for catching some fish in these pools. Let's put it all into one big pot. So we've got a couple of prawns. You can see we've got a blenny, a few prawns, a couple of hermit crabs in there. And then what we'll do is we'll just keep that, put that in a pool now out of the sun. They can't escape through there. Just put a bit of water into it. Yeah, just keep them alive now. We'll just make sure we keep that into a pool now. Just put a couple of stones around that just to secure it there. Which we don't Away. Into a slightly deeper bit. Leave it there. So there's our live baits anyway. So all we've got to do now is just get a small pocket fishing kit out. We just need a hook, a little weight, and a float. Put on these live prawns or the live blenny, the live fish, and just go out now. Well, the water's still really deep over there. Uh, the tide's just starting to go out now. It's nearly out now, so I'm going to walk over to where the start of the net is and show you. Sorry about the wind. Carefully as I go across here, I don't want to fall in with the camera. So this is a pile of stones I was talking about here. Use a nice orange stone so I can identify it there and see it. I've just got our anchor stick under here and it's just a stick with the line coming off it and we just secure this piece of stick with some stones and hopefully you look there, there you go there's our leading line to our net can should just be able to pick up now the head rope and there you go, you can see it running all the way up there and there's a the net just starts just there that, um, seems to have barreled over a little bit I don't know if the water was a bit turbulent what I need to do now is get my shoes and socks off and really go out there and stop pulling that net up and just trying to check if there's any fish in it. I can't see any from here. No sign of it when I lift it up like that, but it's kind of caught you can see on the bottom of the seaweed there. I can actually feel something. When I lift it like that though, I can actually feel something pulling against that. Now I don't know if that's just the tide or hopefully that's the vibration I can feel as a piece of, as a fish. Let's hope so anyway. So I'm going to have to put the camera down now. I'm just going to put the camera down and then I'm going to get the shoes and socks off and walk out there. I'm saying I can just feel something now, I don't know if that's the wind's blowing loud over or hopefully that's the vibrations of a fish in the net there. Fingers crossed anyway. Let's get out there. So there's only the two mullet in the net, two nice big fish though. Um, I'm a little bit worried that the net's not rising up enough, there's not enough float on the line. There's maybe a little bit too much tide coming through and pushing it flat. There's nothing in the net today. Um, there's the two mullet in there from yesterday, but I'm worried, you know, the mullet are bottom feeders. I'm worried that the net's only fishing on the grain, so I've just been over onto the back of the beach up there. There's loads of rubbish up there, and I'm going to add some floats to the net so we can use anything like bottles and tie those onto the headline. Um, luckily, I found this piece of floating, sort of like a polystyrene, don't know, foam type stuff. This was probably, it's got a hole in the middle, I imagine this was for. Uh, commercial gill net, this would have been out on the flag point holding the flag up to mark the end of the net, so I'm going to cut this up into squares um, I'm going to cut it up into squares about that big and then just put some slits in like that 
round and just fix that onto the top of the net. So there's just a few modifications there. It's always good to keep checking the net. Um, I've got my bag here, Leatherman with me obviously, and inside my bag there I've got my full fishing kit, my bug out bag, spare shelter. Everything's in my bag there that I need just in case I get stuck down there. Uh, I've got my full shelter kit, fire kit, billy can, full bug out bag in there, all this fishing kit, um, spare string and cord, necessary stuff to make adjustments to the nets and also um, to make more prawn traps. This is a lovely great big bottle. These big, I don't know what that is, ten, 8 litres, 5 litres, I'm going to cut this off, cut it round there and just push that, invert that neck and put it back in there. Make some more prawn traps, things the prawn traps have been working. So I'm going to get off and make these adjustments now, uh, see in a little bit. So here's the net, in its final rest in place, anchored inshore there, running all the way out, straight out to shore. I've just put the addition on now, I'll just show you how it's tied. So I added the addition of these floats, these pieces of polystyrene I showed you earlier, foam. You can see what I've done, I've just those slits I've just pulled it in onto the fine kite string on there just added a little bit of float to it there and there it is from start to finish and you see the lead line just holding it down there it's come a little bit unstuck just down here <laughs> looks like those bottom set of nets of knots have come together they need to be adjusted but it's the last day I'm going to leave it out today so just going to see how it works. You can see the wind's just lying off now, and they've just laid the foot rope out there, the lead line, and the wind's just holding the floats off. And hopefully, when the tide comes in, that'll lift that up. So, this is what we come out after. It's only a little tiny net, it was only about 10 metres in total length, and we've got two lovely mullet here. Just dispatch those with a swift strike to the back of the head with a good rock there. Two lovely sized fish there. Um, they're going to feed all of us and give one to Adam and Gracie and the family and I'm going to take one in for my tea. Thanks ever so much for watching I hope you find that really useful. Uh, please keep your eye on the channel, watch my other videos. Contact me for any information on courses if you want to come down and join me to do this. Cheers, bye.